In this video, we're going to discuss the metric system and why we use it over the English units. So let's talk a little bit about the metric system. What are the standard units we use in the metric system? These are going to be the grams for mass. These are going to be the meters. Well, meter and gram, sorry. The meter for a distance. This is going to be the second for time and Kelvin for temperature. Now, for the most part, we're not going to talk about Kelvin right now, so let's clear that out. Um, but we are going to talk about grams, meters. So meter, we'll start there. Meter is our distance unit. It's a little longer than three feet. It's a little bit bigger than a yard for people who use the English system. The advantage, why, why use a completely different system, is that English has a lot of problems when you want to do the math. I mean, if you think about it for a minute, how many inches are in a foot? Well, it's 12. There are 12 inches in one foot. You can write it like that, saying that they're equal. We're going to use a lot of ratios. So this is also 12 inches per foot, or one foot is 12 inches. These are all equivalent ways of writing it. But the idea is it's a 12 to 1. You need 12 inches to have one foot. And if you want to scale up in size, which is what we do, if you have you know, something the size of your finger, you might mention, measure it in inches. If you have a piece of lumber, you might mention it in, or measure it in feet. But if you're talking about the trip from where you live to Tacoma, you don't want to measure it in inches or feet. That's very long. You'd want miles. And so there are... 5,280 feet in one mile. Okay. And similarly, you make them equal to each other, you can flip whichever one on top. But the idea is that, well, that, that's a weird random number. There's 5,280 feet in a mile. So how many inches in a mile? Like you'd have to do a lot of odd math and remember all those conversions. This is troublesome. That means every time you have different units, you have to remember a different ratio to do the changes between them. The beauty of the metric system, as you can see over here on the right, everything just shifts a decimal place. They're all multiples of 10. So there's no extra numbers. It's, it's either 10 or 100 or 1,000 times bigger. All you have to do is slide the decimal. So that's going to make our life remarkably simpler. This is the main part of why we use the metric system. Additionally, the starting size of those units was designed to be interrelated to things. The whole system is connected. Originally, it was kind of based on water. Everywhere, everyone had access to water. Like it's grams and meters, and these they're built to be interrelated based on water. And so they all make sense with each other if you dive deep enough into them. But let's talk about how we use them. To start with, well, we're going to use the meter for this one. I have a meter. You have one of them. Well, there's just one meter. So it's about, probably for most of us, it's about the length of our arm. But let's say I want a long object. I need it bigger. I want 10 separate meters. All right? So I had one object, and now I want two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I want 10 of them. Okay. It's much bigger than the original one. Here was one meter. Here are 10 of those same things. Well, the object is 10 times larger. And this is great for a while. It's gonna make a mess to draw them all out. But the idea is if I want 100 meters, all right, you can count up to 100. But by the time you start getting to 1,000 meters, or 10,000 meters, or 100,000, all right, well, that's a lot of zeros. Humans tend to not like lots of numbers. It seems a little bit odd, but if you think about how we write numbers and do things, sets of three are very common throughout humanity and all sorts of cultures. We tend to process up the three things pretty darn well. Past that, it gets a little more unwieldy. 
So when we get to bigger numbers, uh, we don't like these chunks of zeros that just kind of get in the way. We want an easier way to describe them. And this, we saw this with feet. Now, we didn't want to talk about 5,280 feet. We want to talk about a mile. Or if you're at like 2,600 feet, half a mile. It's easier to just shrink it down. So when we're up here at 1,000 meters, well, I don't want to talk about meters. I want to talk about a small number. So we call it one kilometer, which we can see over here on our graph here. So started at one, went up to a thousand of that thing. If you have a thousand of that thing, you can call it one kilo of that thing. And so kilo is a prefix. Metric uses prefixes to tell you what size unit you're using. A single kilometer means it has, in that single version of it, a thousand of the other thing. So one kilometer is 1,000 meters. One kilogram is 1,000 grams. And if you wanted, you could even have one kilosecond, which we don't really do that with time. We still use minutes and hours. So kilo is our 1,000 of prefix. What this ends up looking like is 1,000 meters equals one kilometer. So this is 1,000 meters over one kilometer or the reverse in one kilometer, there are 1,000 meters. So if you have a kilo of something, in that one kilo, you have a 1,000 of the other things. So take a second. If I have 2.5 kilometers, how many meters do you think that is? Give that a shot real quick. All right, well, in one kilo, we have a thousand. So if I have two kilometers, I'll have 2,000. If I have half a kilometer, I'll have, well, half of a thousand, 500. So 2,500. There are 2,500 meters in these 2.5 kilometers, kilometers. The idea of the metric system is that we use a different prefix to tell you what size scale you are in. Are you a thousand in one? Then you are a kilo. Are you a million in one? Then you are a mega. So we can see on the chart over here, grab a slightly different color. The idea is we tend to go up by sets of three. It's not that hard to talk about 10 kilometers or even 100 kilometers, but by the time you'd want to talk about 1,000 kilometers, nope, we need another size unit. And so we jump up and say, all right, well, 1,000 kilometers would be a million meters. And so we call it a megameter. And this keeps going up. You may have seen these type of prefixes on memory for your devices, megabytes, kilobytes, gigabytes, terabytes. Granted, the metric prefix is slightly different than what you'd get for your computer memory, since computers are base two. Um, they technically aren't exactly the same values. Um, but the same idea, you see those prefixes. That's great if you're getting larger. What if you're getting smaller? So let's go down the scale here. What if I have a smaller thing? So I've got one meter, and I want to talk about a smaller bit of it. We'll say 0 0.1 meters, so a tenth of it. This time I want to talk about a smaller unit. Well, to do that, I, there's a prefix for it. Now, we actually don't tend to use a couple of these for a while, but deci is one-tenth. And you'll notice up above it, deca is ten times. Dec, like decade, 
for 10. Well, if you're getting smaller, you put an I on the end. So deci, centi, milli. These are telling you you're getting smaller on all these things. Um, so a deci is one tenth. So while this is indeed point zero, or sorry, 0 0.1 meters, this is also one decimeter. This continues down. We use centi centimeters often enough. It's one hundredth. So zero point zero point zero one meters is one centimeter. Other way to write this is that, well, if I think back to decimeters, I need multiple of them to add up to a meter. Same with the centimeters. If I had a full meter. That would require a hundred centimeters. And so there's a couple ways to do these ratios. So we could say, hey, if I have 100 centimeter, that is one meter. And either can be on top and bottom, remember. But we can also say that, hey, if I have if I have one centimeter. That is 0 0.01 meters. My idea is I shifted the decimal twice. I went from, hey, 100 down to 1. And I took my meter down to 0 0.01. I just made them smaller. So it's which one did you set to 1? A single meter has 100 of these centis. But a single centimeter, well, you would need a hundred of them to add up to a meter. So one centimeter must be a hundredth of a meter. Common ones that we will see often enough, centi does come up. Milli for a thousand is far more common. And micro for a millionth. Especially going up in scale, we tend to use the kilo. And for chemistry, that's about it. We don't really use the mega or the giga. Occasionally in chemistry, we get down to the nano, but I think micro is probably about as small as we'll get for this course. So those are the idea of metric prefixes. They let us jump around in size scale.